Welcome to Hobbies Beekeeping Lesson 12, Preparing for the Winter. It's very important to prepare your hive for the winter. Factors to consider are how strong does your hive need to be, how much food does it need, where to keep your bees do you need to move your hive for the winter. Inspection of your hive for winter begins in August and is sort of done in combination with determining how much honey supplies to take for yourself and how much to leave for the bees. By the 1st of October, you should be ready for winter. So in August and September, you take a look, prepare the hive for winter by determining location, how many stores they have, and ensuring that there's good ventilation. In October, any further preparations such as what kind of additional feed might you need to provide for the winter time. In November and December, you check for the use of the feed by the bees only if weather permits. Sometimes in our January, February time period, there's a day or two that reaches into the high 40s, low 50s, and you're able to open the lid only to check and see how the feed is being taken, if it is, and then you don't disturb the bees or expose them to the cold air at all. You clear any obstructed ventilation or access areas if needed. Make sure that snow doesn't block the entrance. In January, brood rearing starts as the days lengthen, and you once again want to make sure that you've cleared any obstructed ventilation access. In February and March, you may get, or you should get, a couple of warm days in the lower 50s. And you can take a look once again, not pulling out frames, but taking a look to check feed supplies and that the bees are flying, clearing obstructed ventilation access as needed. Steps for getting the hive ready for winter that you're going to be taking in that August time period you're going to remove any honey supers that are still on the hive, either extracting the honey for yourself or if it's not capped, uh, saving it for um, the bees to take out themselves. Remove any queen excluders. Provide for top and bottom ventilation. And determine how many bees you have, whether you have a weak hive or if it's going to be strong enough to carry through the winter. How strong does your hive need to be? Here are some guidelines to use. You need a minimum of six to eight frames of bees and brood. And you see how many bees there are and the brood is full. This ensures too that you have still a productive queen. You need a minimum of 12 to 14 frames of honey, which is 60 to 80 pounds. And you can take a look at how many frames you have and how much of the honey is capped, meaning it's ready for them to use. You want two hive bodies, one for the brood and the bees and one for stores. Switch the boxes if necessary so that the majority of the brood and bees are in the bottom hive body and the majority of stores are in the top. If your hive doesn't have enough bees or food, the chances of survival over winter are very low. You have options. If you have more than one hive, you can merge a weaker hive with a stronger hive, or you can merge two weak hives together to make a strong hive. This process is called taking your winter losses in the fall. If you need to merge two hives, separate the hive bodies from the colonies that you are merging with a sheet of newspaper to allow them time to get used to the scent of each other. The stronger queen will be the one to survive. After a week, the two colonies will be one. You can move brood from both colonies into the bottom hive body, move frames of honey into the second hive body, brush all the bees from any leftover frames into the new hive. For fall feeding, determine if you need to feed based on the amount of stores in the hive, the activity of the bees, which is weather dependent, and the availability of any nectar sources. It doesn't hurt to provide feed if you're not sure. Remember in the fall, the feed is two parts sugar to one part water. 
the higher concentration of sugar is so the bees don't have to spend so much energy evaporating the water because of the cooler temperatures outside. We recommend that you not use an inline feeder at this point in time, since it takes up space in your hive, it's more difficult to remove when the weather turns cold and the bees are disturbed more. Use either a Boardman feeder on the outside or use one of the options for an inside feeder that we discussed in the earlier lesson on feeding. Winter feeding for the bees is different than what we do in the spring or even in the late fall. In winter feeding, we use solid feed, be it granulated sugar, hard candy, or sugar patties. This is used when the temperatures drop to freezing. We reviewed some of these options earlier, but let me go through them briefly again. Solid feed can be placed directly on the tops of the frames so that the bees can access them during the winter. If you're using granulated sugar, remember to place a piece of non-treated paper on the top frames of the hive. This non-treated paper can be a paper towel or perhaps newspaper, something that is thin, easy for the bees to chew through and make sure that it does not cover the whole surface of the top of the frames. You can pour four to five cups of granulated sugar onto the paper and then install an empty super on top so that there's room for the bees to access the dome of sugar and you don't compress the sugar down into the hive. Go ahead then and add your inner cover and your telescoping cover. For the hard candy, you can place that directly on top of the top hive body on the frames and let the bees access it from that point. Once again, I'd recommend placing a super on top of that so that there's that space for air ventilation as well as the bees to access the hard candy. And the same technique works well for any type of patty that you might put on for winter feed. The location for your bees in the winter, you may want to reconsider where they are. What works for you in the nectar time of the year may not be the best location for the winter. You want to be sure that the hive is located away from standing areas of water that occur in the late winter and spring. You want them to have protection from mice that are looking for nice warm homes, which you can accomplish by putting a screening on the entrance that allows the bees to come and go, but no mice to get in. Make sure the hive is ventilated. You have the screened bottom board and you want your entrance and a top opening as well, just in case the snow covers up your bottom entrance. This allows for airflow to reduce that moisture buildup in the hive, as well as allowing the bees, if the weather's warm enough on a couple of days during the winter, to get out and do a cleansing flight. You want protection from the winter wind, which can be very cold in our area. You would like to have south facing for maximum sunlight. And you want to be able to access your hive throughout the winter to help ensure that the entrances aren't blocked by snow. In summary, it's important to begin your winter preparations actually in late summer, at the same point in time when you start looking at your hives to determine if you can extract or take any honey from those hives. You're taking a look at how many bees there are, how much stores the particular hive may have, and if necessary, you're combining hives so that you have a strong hive going into the winter. You're looking at what options for feed and remembering that it needs to be a solid feed, so be it granulated sugar on top of a piece of paper, patties, or hard candy, the choice is yours. And just think about what you would like to do and which would work best for you. Take a look also at your location and remember where your prevailing winds come from. Here in our area, we do get cold weather and some very harsh winds. You may wish to provide some additional protection for your bees in the winter. But whatever you do, we strongly recommend 
that you make sure you provide for good ventilation, access both at the bottom and the top of your hive for airflow, and that you make sure that there is no blockage to that airflow during the winter.